All right, we're here at the Husqvarna Technical Center here, and we've got Quinn Cody right here who's gonna change the oil on my 701 Husky. So this is the first oil change for this bike. Um, I've ridden it maybe 300 miles, and Quinn's gonna help me out today, uh, get this thing going. It's not even due for an oil change yet, Simon. I don't know why you're here. <laughs> 300 miles. Well, that's the first thing you said is like, oh, I'm like, I wanna make a video, and you're like, oh, you just need your oil changed. I'm like, well, pretty much, but yeah. Yeah. All what right. it, what is the braking period on this bike? Do you know? Uh, so I believe it's 600 miles is the first oil change, and um, so that's kind of your first service. And then after that, service intervals are pretty long on these things. Um, of course, it depends on how you ride it. But got to check the oil really, every every couple rides. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of keep an eye on the sight glass. I I don't really know what the exact service interval is. I'm sure I could find it in the manual. You have to look for that. All right, so first thing we're going to do is pull off this Outback Motortech skid plate that he's got on here. Uh, it's kind of a heavy beast, so we're going to give this a try. I haven't not done one of these, but if you have a stock bike, it's, it's very similar. Just two bolts in the front, and then the whole thing should slide forward. We'll see how it goes. So I think that thing's got a bolt on either side that you could just undo right there, and then it should just slide forward, I think. Yeah, we're about to find out. See what happens with this thing. Have you changed much oil in bikes in your past? No. I usually just ride them. I don't... You probably have guys that do it for you. Yeah. There Look at that. Is. Easy. Perfect. That's as easy as the stock one. So that's a that's a nice piece. Very cool. Hey, so aren't you supposed to be wearing rubber gloves for this? Probably should, but I never do. This unofficial, right? Yeah, yeah. Off-road unofficial. <laughs> I don't really like wearing rubber gloves, so I just do it old school. Bareback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the skid plate off. What's next? So now we're going to drain the oil. Um, first is the oil drain plug. Then we have the screen here. So there's two. So, there's two right there. Which one do you do first? Yep. So drain plug here, yep. and then the screen. I usually do that second, so okay. I get most of the oil out first, and then that way it's easier to pull the screen. Um, break that loose at the 13 millimeter. There's a crush washer on there. Sometimes you have to replace them, sometimes you don't. They usually last quite a while. So now I'm not wearing gloves, but look at that. Smooth. How's it look? Looks brand new. Yeah, I think I have more than need 300 to, you miles. You need to ride this thing harder. I have more than 300 miles. I know Magnets that. even clean. Oh, that's good. So you'll see, like, especially in your first ride, you'll see a little bit of metal shavings on the, on the magnet, but nothing, nothing to worry good. about. It's just production stuff. And that's why we got a magnet. Cool. So I started to think this thing outside for maybe 60 seconds. Is that enough or should I do more? I usually run them. I'll ride them down the street and get them up to get them warm so the oil comes out a little quicker. Okay. It's coming out a little slow, but if it's cold, it's gonna be really, uh, painful so you're better off to just ride the thing and get the oil nice and warm so wait a sec so you're saying ride the bike isn't the oil going to be super hot isn't that going to burn your hands so I, I just warm it up i mean up and down the street you don't want to you don't want to come in with the bike piping hot and and crack the bolt loose because oil will come shooting out hot oil so so you don't really want to change your oil after yeah, you come I back mean, from baja if you can rest your hand on the engine cases and it's warm warm to the touch it should be okay. You just don't want it to be hot. You don't want the exhaust hot or anything like that. So in that case that you're riding, obviously let it cool down a bit before you crack the drain plug. So the drain plugs pretty much uh, drain most of the oil out of the engine. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the screen. Is that the same size um, socket? Also 13 millimeter. Okay. Crack that loose. Looks like there may be a little different bolt in here. I don't know if somebody's been at this thing before me, but so the screen should come out pretty easily. And that's there to just kind of catch any little micro uh, flakes or gasket material or anything, especially uh, first oil change break in. There's always a little bit of stuff. So do you, re do you usually replace that at an oil change or can you reuse it? Generally I clean them. Yeah. I'll just blast them off with contact cleaner, clean them up pretty good and and they should be fine. Uh, KTM sells a kit. You can, it comes with new screens, new oil filter and everything. So change them every once in a while. Good. So how much oil will come out of that second one? Will much come out or is it pretty much drained from the first one? 
Yeah, I usually will lean the bike over a little bit just to get kind of the last of the oil out. Um, sometimes you can put it on the side stand and that angle is just enough to get the last little bit of oil out. All right, so what's next? You got that screen out. How do you clean that thing? So normally I just blast them off with contact cleaner. Um, just kind of give it a give it a good shot, get all the oil off. You can see there's a little bit of material still on there. Um, sometimes you can take a little bit of air and blast it out too. The main thing is just to kind of get them nice and clean. You can inspect it and make sure there's no rips or anything in the screen. But if it, if it looks good like this one, then you, it's safe to put it back in. Okay. Maybe wipe it down. I may go and just hit it with a little bit of air and blast it out from the inside. But yeah, this one looks good. And then same with the, with the magnet. See the metal shavings on there. So I just kind of blast it off and then you won't get them all off of there, but then you just wipe it down with the rag. Again, I should be wearing gloves, but sometimes you don't. All right, so yeah, I'll, I'll clean all this stuff up and just check and make sure the O-ring still looks good. Um, mainly just contact cleaner just to get the oil off and helps you when you're reinstalling it too. But the O-ring looks still perfect on that one, so good to put that back in. Like if you had to guess, like how often would you have to change the O-ring on that? I mean, it depends on how much you change the oil. If, uh, you know, if you leave it in there, it's really only gonna be damaged if you're taking it in and out. So I don't know, I would say maybe every, every other oil change or something like that might not be a bad idea to change out that O-ring and change out your crush washer on the, on the drain plug also. So you talked about a kit that you could buy that has the screen in. Does it have these, this stuff in it as well, or is that separate? It's a good question. I don't know. We're going to look into that. Honest. Yeah, we're we'll look into that. that. We'll find some part numbers for you uh, for the crush washer and the O-ring there, and maybe a part number for the kit too. All right, so we're going to pull the uh, left side oil filter out. So there's, there's two of those, right? One on either side? Yeah. So we got two oil filters on this engine. Are they the same size? Nope. So one's a shorty and one is a little bit longer. So two different part numbers, two different filters. You can't really screw them up. They just won't fit. So I usually turn this sideways so I can get my finger behind it. Yeah. And then pull it out. So some oil comes out of there too, okay. Yep. So then all the stuff that you took off earlier, you just, leave, you just leave it there. You don't reinstall it until you're ready to reinstall everything. Yeah, you know, that way I just, when I reinstall it, I, I put it all back on at once and then I torque everything and so I know it's all tight. And then also gives the engine a little bit of time to drain any excess oil out that, that might come out. So to pull this filter, um, little trick is you just use this pair of snap ring pliers and it's kind of hard to get to with, with anything else, so. Yeah, I've tried to do that with a little flathead like screwdriver that. and it's like difficult. Okay, there it is. And then there's some oil that comes out of there. So this is the long filter. Okay. It goes on the left side. So L for long and L for left. Yep. I knew my schooling would come in handy one day. There you go. And then you can tilt the bike a little again. Last little bit of oil out of there. So I don't really know if you need to or not, but uh, generally, or even if it's in the owner's manual, but I usually just spray a little bit of contact cleaner in here just to make sure that there's no debris sitting in the bottom. So I'll just kind of put a little bit in there just to liquefy whatever's left of the oil and then lean the bike over and get whatever's left out of there. It doesn't have to be super clean. And then I'll use a rag sometimes to just kind of wipe it out and make sure that there's nothing, nothing in there. That, again, that's not really, that's just something I do. Yeah, not man, really my, necessary. My bike's gonna be super, super clean after this one. We'll just spray it down with contact cleaner before you leave. Yeah. So all the, all the excess oil that's dripped out, you just clean that all off? Yeah, I just hose it off. 
So a little tip, you gotta make sure you move your oil pan over a little bit so that when you pull the filter on the other side off, uh, it doesn't go everywhere, the oil. Yeah, it's nice to have one that's big enough like this too, so it kind of covers both sides of the bike. Um, like I said, I like to leave everything open, let all the oil kind of drain out. So this is the, the other oil filter on the right side. Pull our little eight millimeters. And then again, I'll just kind of rotate it a little bit and pop it off. A little bit of oil comes out. And then, excuse me, grab my snap rings and Pop that guy out of there. So that's the short one again yeah. on the left, on the right side. And just spray it out, a little bit of contact cleaner. This one's not as deep as the other one, so it's a little easier to get in there and wipe it out. All right. All right, so uh, we're gonna install the right side filter, start buttoning everything back up. So this just goes in and you'll feel it kind of lock in. Uh, the right side one has two rubber, uh, you know, gasket O-ring here because this is an actual oil circuit. So runs oil through um, and that snaps in. And you just tighten up the little Small eight millimeter heads. These are five millimeter um, screw. So it's pretty pretty small screw and uh, you don't need much torque on this. It goes in pretty pretty easy. I'm not sure what the torque spec is, but we can, we can take a look. I usually just call it T-handle torque. So just give it a little. We're well, back on the left side, so you're giving some contact cleaner on the on the cover there. Yeah, just cleaning it up a little bit, checking. I'll check that O-ring again, make sure that the O-ring still looks good. These can tear from time to time. It's a little bit sharper surface um, that where it mates into the engine case, so you got to kind of keep an eye on them. If they tear a little bit, then they'll weep. They'll weep a little bit of oil, but this one looks fine. So we'll just reinstall that. We're well, back on the left side, so you're giving some contact cleaner on the on the cover there. Yeah, just cleaning it up a little bit, checking. I'll check that O-ring again, make sure that the O-ring still looks good. These can tear from time to time. It's a little bit sharper surface um, that where it mates into the engine case, so you got to kind of keep an eye on them. If they tear a little bit, then they'll weep. They'll weep a little bit of oil, but this one looks fine, so we'll just reinstall that. Okay, I'm good. All right, so we're gonna install the left side longer filter. Um, you can see the rubber O-ring here goes to the inside. So you just go ahead and go in there and then you just give it a little push. It mates in there, problem. And then same drill here, just grab the oil filter cover, set it in there. And then you have your two eight millimeter head screws. So those those holes are offset, so you can't get it can't get it wrong, right? It's a little bit. I mean, I I get it wrong about fifty percent of the time, but yeah. But it it'll only go on one way. Though, yeah, right? it only goes on one way, so you know you got it right. And then just snug it up. Again, you don't need much. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our oil screen and drain plug. So I'll just clean this up a little bit. Make sure everything looks okay. There's no oil left coming out. So I grabbed the oil screen. Uh, this is 
basically it can go in either way. It's universal, so it's got a O-ring on each side. Um, again, that's something you want to keep an eye on is make sure these O-rings still look good because that would mean that you need to just replace the screen. But this one's fine, so it just snaps into the... So you put the cover on and then slide the whole thing in? Yeah, basically I just put it on like that and then slide the whole thing in. That has to kind of line up. There's a little uh, hole back in there that the, the other end of the screen goes into. The oil runs through that. So go ahead and get that on. And once again, we'll have to look up the torque spec on this. Who's the best with that? Just give it a little bit so it's nice and tight. It doesn't come out. And then go ahead and do our uh, drain plug. You just got to make sure you've got that. Uh... Yeah, that little washer. Yeah, make sure too. your crush washer is good, and if this thing is kind of deformed or anything, you probably want to go ahead and replace that crush washer. But it looks good, so we'll snug this guy down. I always tighten everything as soon as I put it in, so yeah. there's no chance of it coming out. So, you just so we've done double, double the filter. Check. We've done the filters on either side, and then the two uh, plugs right there. Reinstalled those. So just kind of clean everything up and make sure that there's not a bunch of extra oil dripping off here. Just usually there'll be some oil on the bottom. So just wipe that down. All right, so we've done all that. Hey, what's this? You got some extra bits right here. That's from the skid plate. Oh, skid We're good. Plate. All right, just checking on you. Got our old filters to make sure we dispose of those properly. Uh, now it's time to refill the engine. So. This bike takes 1.8 or 1.7 liters. Can't remember exactly, but I'll, I'll look it up and find out and we'll go ahead and uh, start filling it up. So you always wait till you've drained it before you take the plug out? Yeah, generally. So you can see a little bit of dirt left on there. A lot yeah. of times I'll take the air and blow this off before I pull the plug, but yeah. I just try to wipe that without knocking anything down in there. These engines can handle quite a bit of stuff inside, but I try to avoid it. Just go ahead and clean the dirt off of the off of this guy. Double check the, the O-ring looks good. Would you use contact cleaner on that or not? Yeah, you use contact cleaner on everything. All right, so now it's time to put some oil in, right? Yeah, found a funnel. I don't know if this one isn't exactly what I would normally use, but. Did you figure out I'll how much goes job. in there? Uh, yeah, 1.7 liters, so I was, I was dead on. That's 1.8 quarts. Um, and I usually use a, uh, like a beaker or something to measure the oil with. And I'll go ahead and put like one, 1 1.5 liters in first, start the bike, run a little bit through, and then top it off with the last 200 milliliters. So. Why do you do that? Um, well, generally the, the oil filters and the top end and stuff hold, hold quite a bit of oil. So you, you need to run the engine to get the oil to circulate through and fill the filters up and stuff. So it'll actually fill up to the top of the sight glass before you're actually completely full. So do it like that. And then, you know, it avoids you thinking you're, you're topped yeah. off with oil and you're not, so. Yeah. Okay. But you should always just whatever whatever happens you put that amount in right 1.7 or 1.8 generally i mean if you do an oil change without without changing your filters you probably put a little less in um, and sometimes depending on the engine sometimes it'll hold a little bit of oil so maybe a, a touch less than 1.7 liters but usually right about there yeah all right so you're going to put some oil in the speaker right here what oil are we using today so we're using the husqvarna Motor X Cross Power 1050. I get these gallons because they're awesome. And that way you just fill the fill the beaker and then you're not trying to put a cord in there. So this thing holds a thousand milliliters or a thousand cc's. So that's one quart for all of you Americans. I'm American too, but I speak metric. <laughs> How many kilometers is that? It's a lot. So that's a liter. That looks like a thousand milliliters is a liter. <laughs> I'm a little low. That stuff looks like beer. Right top there. it off. 
I've heard that on a Friday night you use one of those things to drink your beer. For, is that is that true? It looks that looks about right, actually. It's a Liederstein. Isn't that what they call it in Germany? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use my funky little filler funnel here. We got around, and you gotta go pretty slow with these things. See, if I had a little longer funnel, I could probably dump it in a little faster, but. You guys don't have any longer funnels in this whole building? They're, they're around here somewhere, but I don't know. It's in my shop. So found this one. I found this one, I borrowed this one. You get what you get, Simon. I might have to do a time lapse. This is gonna take a long time. I'm shaking too. Yeah. Well, you did, you did drink a lot of Diet Coke at lunch. <laughs> hey, look. Oh, you're finally finished here, okay. Yep, got the first thousand cc's in here, so we're gonna try to get another uh, 700 if we can. Like I said, I'll leave the last 200 for the end. So do you think this would go a lot quicker if we had a better funnel? This is the longest oil change I've ever done. Make sure you shake it so it all, all comes right. out. Get it all out of there. So that's 1500 cc's. Okay. Um, and if you have a look at the, the sight glass, it's basically full all the way to the top. So this is where I just go ahead and start the engine to so put, the, put the filler cap back on and then I just start the engine, let it run, circulate the oil through the system. See it going down now. And now I'll go ahead and put the last 200 cc's. So that's a pro tip. So Pro tip, remember to take that back out again. That always helps. <laughs> you know, a lot of times if we're outside too, I'd, I would run the bike for a little a little bit and just like let the, uh, let the oil circulate. Um, topping the oil off is a little bit of, you kind of want to do it with an warm engine. Go ahead and let the engine temperature come up. Um, 1700 cc's is the recommended, but like I said before, each bike holds the oil a little bit differently and depending on how you do your oil change and whatnot. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and fill it to 1700 cc's and we'll just take it outside and run it and make sure uh, everything's good. Well, it shouldn't take too long with just 200 cc's, right? Gonna warm this stuff up next time. Well, it's been shockingly cold in California lately. I think it got down to 60 degrees today. Good. So once again, we're at the top of the sight glass. Um, as soon as we start the engine up, it should drop down a little bit. So yeah, we're pretty good. We're just gonna button it back up, put the skid plate back on, take it outside go for a little test ride and make sure everything's good. But that's, that's about it. All right, well, thanks. Just got a free oil change on my bike. If you guys ever need an oil change, uh, it's Quinn Cody on Instagram. <laughs> thanks, mate. No problem.